Razer has been making gaming peripherals since 1999, mostly known for their mice and keyboards, the Razer Death Adder and Black Widow. Today we're going to be looking at Razer's second entry to the arcade stick market, the Razer Panthera. The Razer Panthera was released in December 2016 for the PlayStation 4. Like with most Razer products, it comes well packaged with a stylish colored box. Inside contains another box that protects the unit when being shipped. As usual with all Razer products, you get a letter of purchase, the manual, and two Razer stickers. The sides are covered with large foam that stop the stick from moving within the box, making sure you get it in perfect condition. Under the foam, the unit comes sealed with anti-static film. Immediately, we can see that this is a very aesthetic looking stick with a blue and black design. When holding it, you can immediately feel it has a solid build quality. It weighs roughly 6 pounds or 3 kgs. The top of the arcade stick has a gloss finish, which is what most current day arcade sticks have, and the sides and bottom have a matte finish. Although the gloss finish looks very nice, it is a fingerprint magnet, and playing for a few hours you might find that dirt can easily build up on the surface. I would have preferred having a matte finish similar to what PlayStation 4 DualShocks have, as sometimes I did find myself having to wipe the arcade stick regularly. The stick and buttons themselves are made by Sanwa, a reliable brand when it comes to arcade stick parts. The stick is a square JLF lever, it is responsive, tactile and comes with a traditional Japanese bull talk. Razer also provides an American slash Korean bat top as well, which is pretty awesome for new people making the switch from pad. The buttons are OBSF30 push buttons. They are linear, silent, that require very little actuation force and comes with a glossy finish. We will now give it a quick sound test. Above the stick and buttons we have the PlayStation button, a switch for PS3 or PS4 control, a switch to change the stick to either be left right thumbstick or d-pad, might be useful depending on what kind of game you are playing. It also has a locking switch that disables the start, share and PlayStation button, which is great if you plan to take this fight stick to tournaments. A touchpad similar to the ones of the DualShock is also included, very handy and it feels great. A light indicator to display which player you are and L3 and R3 buttons underneath. On the right side of the arcade stick they have placed the start and share buttons. I quite like this since it makes it harder to accidentally press since it's out of the way. They use big arcade buttons so you don't actually have to look down on the arcade stick. You can feel it on the side making it easier playing in the dark. The bottom features a textured rubber mat that also has the Razer logo in the middle which in my opinion looks pretty damn good. The rubber mat mainly helps the arcade stick not move around on tables but also helps when using on the lap. Below the stick and buttons we have the Razer logo that lights up with a breathing effect and when pressed it opens the fight stick. Here we can see a hydraulic pump on the left that keeps the lid up, helps when you're modding the fight stick. Underneath the top we can see that both the fight stick and buttons are set up for ease of modding. The wires are color coded and inside the unit has a honeycomb structure which is screw mountable for any additional mods you might want. At the bottom left and right corners are compartments for storing 3 meter braided 5 pin USB cable and the included extra bat top and screwdriver. Changing to the bat top is as easy as using the flathead side of the screwdriver and unscrewing the bottom of the stick. The detachable cable is pretty well made. I love the fact that it is braided as they don't tangle as easily and last longer. It also has a screw locking mechanism at the 5 pin end that stops it from randomly disconnecting. Some of the not so good things firstly is the price. On the Razer store it is listed for 200 USD, 350 AUD and 380 NZD. The top can't be removed easily to change the artwork. Most people like changing the artwork on their fight sticks from time to time and since it's glued on it's not conveniently set up like how it is for modding. The fight stick also doesn't have any handles which makes it not as convenient to carry. These are probably design choices as this means the top cover is completely sealing the artwork so you never get any moisture buildup or dirt underneath it and with the lack of handles it keeps its sleek profile. So really these are subject to preference. The cable on the other hand when attached sticks out of the body of the unit and can easily be knocked. Some other fight sticks have this part within itself to stop this from happening. One other thing to keep in mind for sure is that Razer do not sell the detachable cable individually. 
It is unique so I don't believe there are any third party cables that will work, so you have to take care of it. If you do happen to lose or damage it, you would have to go through Razer customer support, which is more troublesome than buying another cable, but I have checked on Reddit that most users do eventually get sorted. Overall I can personally recommend the Razer Panthera to those who are looking to make the switch from pad or a veteran looking for a new stick. For first time buyers, you do need a controller that will give you a proper representation of what it feels like to play on an arcade stick. Buying a cheap arcade stick will be more frustration than anything else, but then again it will be an investment. Do think about how long you plan to play fighting games before buying. With that being said, the Resin Panthera is a good stick that you don't have to fuss around much to get it to work. And all the future possibilities of modding. That's if you don't mind spending a bit more and the issues we talked about. The stick and buttons feel great to play on, the cabinet feels strong and stable with a grippy rubber mat. Comes with a detachable cable and storage compartment, great for modding, and the alternative top is great for first time stick buyers as you can easily swap between the ball and bat to find out what you prefer. It is the only stick in the market that comes with both currently. Also the fact that it's made by an international company means it's a bit easier getting future support for the product. Just remember to take care of the cable, download the PC drivers and update the firmware as it helps a fight stick work with X input and the firmware improves the latency of the product which was average on release but now is even better. Definitely get this if you're a fan of Razer products. This has been a Caboosnor Gaming Review and thanks for watching.